The texts for Sunday Vespers with Benediction are available at EWTN.com forward slash Vespers. God, come to my assistance.
I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, namely, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Every time, then, you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. This means that whoever eats of the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord unworthily sins against the body and blood of the Lord. A man should examine himself first. Only then should he eat of the bread and drink of the cup. On some of the significant feast days of the church year, we will have a little longer vespers with some words of exhortation after the scripture reading and an additional devotion. And so today on this solemnity of Corpus Christi, we are having this uh, special celebration of vespers. And obviously it is a feast very dear to our hearts here as this monastery was founded as a monastery dedicated to adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. In fact, Mother Angelica taught the sisters that if ever adoration of the Blessed Sacrament was ever done away with for whatever reason, our reason to exist would cease to exist. So their very life was that of adoration of the most blessed sacrament. And a question to ask in these days, and in light of the feasts that we're celebrating today, is why would someone who is a reputed genius, St. Thomas Aquinas, for example, why would he write so many beautiful hymns and texts that we use on this feast? He lived in the 13th century. What was it that moved him to write so beautiful uh, the text that he had? They, said they have the warmth of devotion in them, and yet there's the clarity of the doctrine about the Holy Eucharist. Or why would someone who was a genius in our own day, Pope St. John Paul II, magnificent mind that he had, why would he spend hours in adoration, sometimes prostrate on the floor. Why would he spend all of that time 
even during his responsibilities as the pontiff, you might say, well, couldn't he be doing other things? Well, I'm sure he had many things that he might have engaged in, and yet he found it necessary to spend time in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Why would St. Teresa of Calcutta, another saint of our day, with all of the obligations that they had in caring for the sick and the needy and all the demands of that, why would they have an hour of adoration of the Blessed Sacrament every day to put into that mix? Why would someone like soon-to-be Blessed Carlo Acutis, he was a 15-year-old boy from Milan who died in the year 2006 of leukemia. He's going to be beatified this coming October 10th in Assisi. Why for him did he call the Eucharist the highway to heaven? And why was it so important to him who was reputedly a computer genius to put together all of the Eucharistic miracles that took place throughout history and compile them, some 130 plus Eucharistic miracles that eventually became the Vatican exhibition of Eucharistic miracles of the world, officially approved miracles, ones like Lanciano in Italy, where in the 1970s when scientists did tests on this miraculous uh, Eucharist that became flesh and blood, they discovered that it was living heart tissue and human blood. Why do these Eucharistic miracles exist? Why in the 300s, the early 300s, were these Christians in Abitine in North Africa, modern day Tunisia, <clears throat> why were they insistent on attending mass even though they knew that it was something that endangered their own lives and eventually they were martyred for that. And they would say, sine dominico non possumus, we can't live without the Lord. And all throughout 2,000 years of history, were all of these people deceived? Were they coerced? Were they cons? <laughs> what was the reason why they would spend time before the Blessed Sacrament and adoration, or why they were so hungry, so thirsty, so longing to receive the Lord in the Eucharist. Why? We think of these people as the most honest, the most sincere, the most generous of people. And the only conclusion that we really can come to is that what the church professes and has always professed for 2,000 years, and what these saints professed with their lives and their example, with their thirst, their hunger, their adoration, is that what we believe is true. That what the Lord taught, that this is my body, this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you'll have no life in you. It's because that's true. It's because what St. Paul would write a couple of decades later, because that's true. What we heard in today's reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, that he said, I hand it on to you, namely, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread, gave thanks, and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he concluded, the reading today concluded, this means that whoever eats of the bread or drinks of the cup of the Lord unworthily sins against the body and the blood of the Lord. He's speaking of the reality. And then earlier today at Holy Mass, we heard him say this in a, a chapter earlier, chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians. This was chapter 11 we had tonight. St. Paul said, 
the cup of blessing we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? And that word participation is koinonia, can be translated communion. Is not this cup, is not this bread, a communion, a koinonia, a participation in the body and the blood of the Christ. This is St. Paul writing just a couple of decades after our Lord's institution of the Holy Eucharist. This is something that he came to understand. And as I said, for 2,000 years, this has been professed. And this devotion has grown throughout the centuries. And so what you saw happen, for example, in the 13th century, I mentioned St. Thomas Aquinas, you saw that people wanted to bear witness to this reality, and so they began processions of the Blessed Sacrament to honor the Lord, to confess this truth, and to draw awe to the Lord who remains present with us in this way all days until the end of the world. And another one who was living at that time is our own St. Francis of Assisi. He had a profound love of the most blessed sacrament. You can't really understand St. Francis of Assisi without understanding his devotion to the blessed sacrament. He would write in several of his letters of the blessed sacrament. And here's what he wrote to the custodians. So these were those who had some authority over small friaries. They were the friar in charge, if you will, of that small friary. And he wrote letters to these custodians. And here's what he wrote. With all that is in me and more, I beg you that when it is fitting and you judge it expedient to humbly beg the clergy to revere above all else the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. They should hold as precious the chalices, corporals, appointments of the altar, and everything that pertains to the sacrifice. If the most holy body of the Lord is very poorly reserved in any place, let it be placed and locked up in a precious place according to the command of the church. When it is sacrificed on the altar by the priest and carried anywhere, let all the people's praise glorify and honor on bended knee the Lord God living and true. Seems like he believes in that reality. And that's why we try to keep all the appointments here immaculate and fitting for the Lord. And something, when you know, in light of the wonderful outpouring of roses that we had, and we have beautiful flowers here to celebrate the feast of Corpus Christi. I read this too about St. Francis, that he asked St. Clair to make corporals to donate to the poor churches where the saint himself would prepare vases of flowers for the altars. Because he wanted to, everything to point to that reality, because if this is true, if this is really true, that Jesus remains with us in this profound way all days until the end of the world, and that we will always find help and consolation in his presence. And we need to celebrate that. We need to announce that and magnify it. So Mother Angelica built a shrine dedicated to the most blessed sacrament with adoration, where you had the mass and the beautiful procession that took place there today. One final thing that I wanted to, to talk about as well so another thing that we'll be doing here uh, tonight at the conclusion of the Vespers is we're going to have the Litany of the Most Blessed Sacrament. This was written by a saint of the Blessed Sacrament, St. Peter Julian Amar. He was the founder of the Blessed Sacrament Fathers. He had a profound devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. When we were in France this past August, we were making programs on Lourdes that are going to be airing in July. We had the privilege to go in Paris 
where his body is interred, and we prayed there. And I prayed that I would grow in devotion to the Blessed Sacraments and help others to do so as well. So we're going to be praying that litany of the Blessed Sacrament at the conclusion of the Vespers tonight. And then we have a treat for you. So one of my favorite texts of St. Francis is a beautiful poem that he wrote in his letter to all of the faithful. And really, I think it's one of the most beautiful things ever written about the Blessed Sacrament. And the text, hopefully, is going to be on your screen that you can follow along that text written by St. Francis of Assisi. And I asked, asked our own Dr. Timothy Banks here to write music to accompany these beautiful words. You have the text in your booklets here, and our people at home hopefully will have that also on their screen to follow along. And I just conclude with a few of those words that we'll be uh, singing after the litany of the Most Blessed Sacrament. Let all mankind treble, all the world shake, and let the heavens exalt when Christ, the Son of the living God, is present on the altar in the hands of a priest. O admirable heights and sublime lowliness, O sublime humility, O humble sublimity, that the Lord of the universe, God and the Son of God, so humbles himself that for our salvation, he hides himself under a little piece of bread. cast out the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled all the weak with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has 
has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. Christ invites all to the supper in which he gives his body and blood for the life of the world. Let us ask him. The Savior's command and form by divine teaching we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Against us, 
this wonderful sacrament, have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The litany of the most blessed sacrament. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Jesus, eternal High Priest of the Eucharistic Sacrifice, have mercy on us. Jesus, divine Victim on the altar for our salvation, have mercy on us. Jesus, hidden under the appearance of bread, have mercy on us. Jesus, dwelling in the tabernacles of the world, Jesus really, truly, and substantially present in the Blessed Sacrament. Have mercy on us. Jesus abiding in your fullness, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Have mercy on us. Jesus, bread of life. Have mercy on us. Jesus, bread of angels. Have mercy on us. Jesus with us always until the end of the world. Sacred host, summit and source of all worship and Christian life. Have mercy on us. Sacred host, sign and cause of the unity of the church. Have mercy on us. Sacred host, adored by countless angels. Have mercy on us. Sacred host, spiritual food. Have mercy on us. Sacred host, sacrament of love. Have mercy on us. Sacred host, bond of charity. Have mercy on us. <clears throat> Sacred host, greatest aid to holiness. Have mercy on us. Sacred host, gift and glory of the priesthood. Have mercy on us. Sacred host, in which we partake of Christ. Have mercy on us. Sacred host, in which the soul is filled with grace. Have mercy on us. Sacred host, in which we are given a pledge of future glory. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. For those who do not believe in your Eucharistic presence. For those who are indifferent to the sacrament of your love. For those who have offended you in the holy sacrament of the altar, have mercy on us. that we may show fitting reverence when entering your holy temple, we you to hear us. that we may make suitable preparation before approaching the altar, we you to hear us. that we may receive you frequently in holy communion with real devotion and true humility. That we may never neglect to thank you for so wonderful a blessing. We beseech you to hear us. That we may cherish time spent in silent prayer before you. We beseech you to hear us. That we may grow in knowledge of this sacrament of sacraments. We beseech you to hear us. That all priests may have a profound love of the Holy Eucharist. We beseech you to hear us that they may celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass in accordance with its sublime dignity. We you that we may be comforted and sanctified with holy viaticum at the hour of our death. We you that we may see you one day face to face in heaven. We <clears throat> Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, 
Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. Let us pray. Most merciful Father, you continue to draw us to yourself through the Eucharistic mystery. Grant us fervent faith in this sacrament of love, in which Christ the Lord himself is contained, offered, and received. We make this prayer through the same Christ our Lord.
Bonum de cielo prestitis dies. Oremus, Deus qui nobis sub sacramento mirabili, passionis tue memoriam reliquisti, tribue quesumus, ita nos corporis et sanguinis tui sacra misteria venerari, ut redemptionis tue fructum in nobis jugiter sensiamus, qui vivis et regnas in saecula saeculorum. the divine praises. of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even until the end of time. Amen.